Original. Original. Good morning. Hi, I'm Tina Lachey. If you're new here, if you're not new here, I'm obviously Tina Lachey. Welcome back to another day, another vlog. It is the crack of friggin' dawn. Let me get me some water. I'm about to go to the gym. Ugh. No, I'm not a morning person. So all those people who go to the gym at like five o'clock in the morning, what, like why do it to yourself? I just, I can't. Ugh. Oh. Yeah, I can't do it. Um, what time is it? Seven twelve. I'm supposed to be at the gym uh, at seven thirty. Let me get some water. No, my hair isn't done. If you're a natural girly, then you know who taking a twist out out and then going to the gym. Not me. All I do is pray. Yeah. All I do is pray. It's probably just because I'm impatient, but why does the flow not come out faster than that on the refrigerator? Let's go. Already my day is starting to get up. <sighs> get in the car. My gas light is on. What do you need for gas? Money. Guess where my money is? In the house. So of course I'm gonna be late. It's only the crack of dawn and you guys already know. Y'all hear my dryer? It's janky too. Y'all already know two of my flaws. No, three. I'm impatient. I'm forgetful. I'm not a morning person. Oh, another one. And I'm always late. Gosh, dog. And watch God make a way, make a way. No more stressing over what's out of my control. Yeah, all I do is pray, 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 pray. And watch God make a way, he'll make a way. No more worrying about my came home from the gym and try to act like I didn't have nothing to do when I have all the things to do. Mm. Y'all see the, y I don't know, like, my birthday is on Friday and I'm feeling like putting some braids in my hair instead of being natural because I don't know it's it's bothering me for some reason I don't know it's, I don't know she's not cooperating like yeah, I think I am because like how I feel right this second is she's going in a puff. My hair is probably just as temperamental as I am. If not more. So let's add that to my list of things to do is to go to the hair store and um, get some braiding here. Because I'm tired. I, I really am. Mm. 
Ugh. As you see, it's in a puff, right? It's not even a good puff. But whatever. Mm. I have so much to do. It's ridiculous. My bed not made. Laundry not done. Mess over here. Mess over there. So needless to say, I need to clean my room, right? But I have also oh! <sighs> You scared the mess out of me, boy. Listen, I'm a scary person, okay? What? She hello. She hello. He was sitting outside my door. When I opened the door, he bum rushed me. I don't, I don't like that. Oh, let's see my outfit. Now, you know your stepdaddy don't like you in here. Get out. This is my outfit. Some boots. Jeans. Black shirt with a jacket. Okay. My ugly puff. Um... My hoops. I have a necklace on, but it's silver, so it's tucked inside of my inside of my shirt because everything else is gold. And I have this, I have this weird thing about matching. I think anybody who was born like, hold on, anybody who was like born in the eighties, early nineties probably has a thing about matching. I think our parents were like OD on it. Out. You know, like your socks had to match, your bow had to match, your shirt had to match, everything had to match. All right, this is what we're about to do now. All of that stuff I need to Get it loaded in the car and take it to Goodwill. Yeah, that's what I'm about to do now. I can't handle this. No, I don't know where you are. Somewhere out in the dark. Don't want to guess what you're up to. But I think I might know. You're an untrustworthy soul No, I can't trust you no more I'm standing up for myself So don't cry to me when I let you go When I let you go Can you be I'm in Now I have to get it to the car Woo! It's almost morning and I don't know if you're alright I've been waiting by my phone for a call from you Tonight was meant for us, but I don't know where you went to I knew who you were mm. But I tried to look the other way You ghost everyone But with me I thought you'd stay You're an untrustworthy soul And I won't trust you no more I'm standing up for myself so don't cry to me when I let you go When I let you go Can you be fine? I've been waiting on you for a long time It's almost morning and I don't know if you're alright I've been waiting for my phone for a call from you Y'all gotta come with me <laughs> Look at me trying to be y'all Cinematic. Cinematic. Now I gotta find my water. Oh, we can't go nowhere without her. What do I do? Oh, up here. If you are in the market to purchase a home, don't get one with stairs. <laughs> Just. 
Don't get a house with stairs. Whew. I don't know what me and the husband were thinking. I just, I don't know. Whew. Why is that light on? <sighs> Y'all don't know what we were thinking when we bought this house. Knowing we getting older, not younger. Oh my gosh. When all these kids get out, we're going to have to, uh, we got to do something different. Hmm. Okay. Whew. I got all my Goodwill bags in the car. I am hating my hair today. Just, oh my gosh. Like, despising it, hating. Like, I don't, I don't know. It's gonna have to, it's gonna have to do. So, I got all the bags in the car. Um, I need to go to the gas station first because I got 13 miles. Gaslight is on. Oh, then I'm going to drop the bags off, and then I need to go pick up my medicine from the pharmacy. Then I need to eat, and I just broke three nails trying to get them bags in the car, and. Like my nails grow really good, my own personal nails, but they break so easy. So this one was long and <laughs> it's gone. It's, it's gone. And then this one is cracked right here. Like that is way down in my nail bed for a crack to be. It's like no matter what I do, my nails just break so easy. And then getting acrylics. Acrylics make my nails grow good too because I don't have a problem growing the nails. However, when it's time to take the acrylics off, now my nails are damaged and it's even worse. So I don't usually like getting acrylics for that reason. Then I've tried the overlay on top of my natural nails and that seems to do the same thing that acrylics do. Eventually it just damages my nails. So I don't know if you have any tips on that, <laughs> something that you know that I don't know, please go ahead and let me down, know down below because it's really getting on my nerves. I got, I got really nice nails. I just, bro. So anyway, I'm about to go run these uh, errands and yeah. Um, I'll be right back. All right, clothes are dropped off at the Goodwill. Now I need to go get my medication. So while I'm on the way to get my medicine, I decided let me tell you a little bit about my anxiety story. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> oh my goodness. So yes, I am going to pick my anxiety meds up. I need those. I need those. Uh, oh, somebody behind me too. Okay, so let's start at the beginning. Um, when I was e witty, itty witty bitty. Yeah, whatever. Anyway, so, um, looking back now, as I was younger, I think I may have had anxiety back then, 
but nobody knew it as anxiety because if you know anything about anxiety you know that um, it presents differently in different people so I think it was coming off as indifference when I was younger like I don't care I don't care I don't care because if you don't care you don't feel right so I was doing that a lot um, but when anxiety really had me in a chokehold it happened when I had I think it started when I had my second baby um, if you don't know she is um, she's 14 now um, but she had a lot of health stuff going on that I didn't know anything about um, my oldest child she easy breezy no problems no issues she was a typical baby um, so when I had my second one and stuff was weird and it started causing me worry and concern you know and that's typical you know I'm her mama um so she would just have stuff like projectile vomiting um blood in her stool um she was head banging like it was just a lot of weird stuff going on so I was like what's going on with my baby so I'm like researching, trying to figure out stuff. Um, I kept taking her to the doctor. They acting like I'm crazy, but I ain't crazy, okay? So it just, you know, I just was heightened. Like I was, I was losing it a little bit. Like something is going on, what is the problem? Um, eventually they started trying to change her milk and all this kind of stuff. Cause this stuff could happen as soon as we got home from the hospital she started experiencing these things. So she was a little tiny baby. Um, her lips turned black, um, her skin got horrible. Um, and they were saying, oh, you know, she just has eczema and you know, wash her in this and do this and do this. None of so it's like, okay, <laughs> what is the problem? Like everything y'all are telling me to do is not working. Um, something has to be the cause. So of course I had to start researching myself and I was like, okay, well, maybe she has um, an allergy to milk. Maybe. So I went to the doctor and I said, yeah, you know, this is what I think. And they're like, no, she's too young to have an allergy to milk. And um, that's probably not it. Blah, 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 blah. But we'll change her milk to um, a soy milk. So then they change her to a soy milk. Change her to a soy milk. Um, and it did a little better, but like her skin was still messed up. And I mean, when I say messed up, like her, her whole, the whole cheek was flared and like bumps and redness. And it was just really like, oh my gosh. Um, so then eventually I kept saying, you know, I don't think, I think we need to switch to something else. So then we switched to the Nutramogen, which is the, um, milk free milk protein free milk um so we started with that by the time we got to her one year checkup i was like done okay like i was done we had been going through this for a year <laughs> stuff was still not changing and this was the time where it was time to switch her from formula to regular milk so i was like before i switch her to any kind of milk I need us to do um, an allergy test. We did the allergy test. Now at this point, she's one years old. This is at her one year checkup. They did the allergy test. And of course it comes back. She is allergic to everything in the world, okay? <laughs> so she's allergic to milk. She's allergic to eggs. She's allergic to peanuts. She's allergic to fish. She's, she's just allergic, she's allergic. Um, so all that time we were giving her milk, she was allergic to it. And that's why she was breaking out. That's why she was having all the issues, the vomiting. It was just, it was crazy. So now I have to deal with this. Okay. Now I'm a, I'm a mom. I'm a young mom. I've got a four year old, a five year old daughter already. She's starting school. Now I have this little baby. 
she's one and she's allergic to all this stuff I don't know anything about you know food allergies <laughs> so now it's like oh my god I gotta keep her alive <laughs> when I say I was freaking out mentally like oh my gosh it was crazy and guess what guys I got pregnant again <laughs> What the world? Oh my gosh. Ugh. So at this point, when did I get pregnant with my son? They're 18 months apart. So she was still a baby. She was a baby. She was a baby. What, maybe like nine months is when I found out. She was nine months old when I found out that I was pregnant. I think so. Yeah. Like that just, that, that took it there, okay? I think that that was the straw that broke the camel's back. <laughs> I got pregnant again. So in the midst of finding out about the allergies and how do I keep her alive? How do I use an EpiPen? What are the signs? What are the symptoms? What am I supposed to be looking for? All of these things, I'm pregnant too. So the hormones are out of control. I, <laughs> It was, it was just a mess, okay? So then I finally have the baby. And like I said, they're 18 months apart. So now I have two babies. I have two babies, um, one with health issues, and one that's just an itty-bitty infant. Um, on top of that, we find out that my second child also has asthma. <laughs> so on top of the food allergy she now has asthma I don't know anything about asthma either bruh so like basically you telling me my baby is like a walking time bomb like it was just too much it was too much so now I'm learning how to use nebulizers I'm trying to get um, EpiPen prescriptions and um, inhaler prescriptions and albuterols and just all this stuff now we got to work with the health insurance because can we afford all these medications <sighs> it was just a lot oh my gosh it was a lot and I'm not trying to be dramatic but like it was a lot it was a lot so I got this little baby I got this little baby and I still had my older baby and and I was a stay-at-home mom so my husband, you know, I mean, he worked. So I'm the one who's there every day, all day, trying to care for all these people. <laughs> and it was like an intense pressure to like, make sure I kept my baby alive. Like, it, I don't know, but it was like I woke up every day hoping that, you know, nothing happened to her, right? It was, it was crazy. So, I think we're going along pretty well, right? We're, we're doing okay. We're, you know, we're doing okay. <sighs> I done had two babies, so now I'm trying to lose weight. I go and get some meal replacement bars. I think it was like, what, uh, was it Weight? No, not Weight Watchers. What's the one everybody eats? I don't know. It was a meal replacement bar from some brand and it had peanuts in it. And while I was tending to my son, my daughter goes over there and she takes a bite. Now I catch her and I try to get it out of her mouth. So I not even, I don't even think she like swallowed it, but she put it in her mouth. And so I automatically go and I get the ingredient of the the package I'm looking at the ingredients on there oh my god it's got peanuts in there I'm about to freak out so maybe like not even two minutes later she comes to me and she's doing this and she's saying ow 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 and she's crying and I'm like oh my gosh like I think she's having a reaction to the meal replacement bar. When I say I had to get the EpiPen out and I was so scared. Um, I was so scared. I'm trying to think who did I call first? I think I had called my husband 
first before she started reacting to tell him that she took the bite and I told him I had to get off the phone because I needed to call 911 so I get off the phone I call 911 and 911 is walking me through how to give her the EpiPen when I say that was like up to that point that was the most traumatic experience I've ever had in my life like ever so I'm like oh my gosh okay um I'm still trying to remain calm cool collected inside I am freaking the freak out but I still had my oldest baby and I still had the youngest baby so I'm trying not to freak them out and scare them um I think my oldest, she was already scared. I think she kind of knew what was going on. You know, she was five. She knew something wasn't right and something was going on with her sister. So I'm just trying to stay calm. <laughs> so I, the 911 operator walks me through giving the EpiPen. I do the EpiPen. Um, I do the EpiPen. They send the ambulance. Um, and then I couldn't even ride with her to the ambulance because I had all these kids. <laughs> like, bruh. But luckily the um the hospital was maybe like four minutes up the road from where we where we lived. So it was like, okay, let's get all the kids in the car. We're gonna go up here to uh the hospital and they're going to, you know, watch her. Because after you give an EpiPen you're supposed to go to the hospital so they can watch for for the reactions make sure that the EpiPen has worked um, all those things so we go into the hospital I let my husband know we're going to we're going to the hospital um, he didn't work too far from where we were at so he got there pretty quick and it's like I held myself together that whole time even though inside I was freaking out I like all the emotions of that experience it traumatized me but yet I wasn't showing that it was it was bothering me but it was um so I held all that in um so after that experience you know I'm on high alert I'm watching everything everything that we bring into our house like to this day I don't bring peanut products in my house. <laughs> Not doing it. Um, it's just, I don't know. And I think over time holding that in, holding that in and still stressed out with having three kids under five, it was a lot going on. I and I think my anxiety symptoms started to like get more and more serious. Um so at that point is when I started experiencing symptoms due to the anxiety, like the panic attacks. I was having tingling like in my face, tingling in my hands. Um I was having like heart attack symptoms or I had my husband taking me to the hospital thinking I'm having a heart attack. I think we did that maybe about two or three times. Um, and then not really knowing what's going on. Um, it, it was a lot. It was a lot. I didn't know anything about what a panic attack was. I didn't know anything about, uh, <laughs> you know, the symptoms of anxiety. And I had no clue that it was anxiety at that point. I just knew something wasn't right. I wasn't feeling right. I was, I was feeling horrible. I was feeling like, um, I was feeling really bad, bro. Like, there were some days that I felt I was going to go to sleep and not wake up in the morning. Like, that's how bad I felt. Like, I felt like I was going to die in the middle of the night or I was going to die right here. And I would have to, like, the only thing that grounded me is I would have to like hold on to my husband and hold him while he held me just to ground me like and thinking back to that time is it's, it's hard um 
I say the majority of the nights, I did not think I was going to wake up the next day. That's, I just was feeling horrible. Um, I'm like, I don't know what's wrong with me, but there's no way I'm waking up tomorrow. There's no way. There's no way. And guess what? That just exasperated the anxiety, <laughs> having that feeling. So it was crazy. Um, I dealt with those feelings for maybe three years two two three years um before it kind of started calming down a little bit uh, i guess the more comfortable i got with taking care of my boo which i mean there were some other traumatic experiences that happened with her <laughs> within that time too some hospital stays some um she barely made it it, it, it was just very traumatizing you know, and I love my boo. I do. I do. But yeah. Yeah. And I'm not sure if other parents who have children who have like health issues go through those same fears, go through those same um, feelings. I don't know. Maybe I'm just too sensitive. I don't know. But I was going through it. I really was. So anyway, fast forward to, I still don't know what's wrong with me. I'm just dealing at this point. I have learned how to deal with the symptoms. Um, at this point, I kind of knew like if I'm having a panic attack, you know, this is what I do or because I, I mean, I've look, started looking up the symptoms and I'm like, okay, this sounds like anxiety. So when a panic attack comes, I lay down on the floor, put my feet on the wall. It calms my heart rate and you know, I just started learning how to cope. Um, fast forward to I had my last child. And I had her. It was fine. I opened up my daycare center. I started my daycare center, opened it up. And now I'm taking care of other people's children in my home. It was a little stressful. It was a rewarding it was a rewarding stressful but it was still stressful you know i mean anytime you're taking care of other kids and you're trying to do it the right way it it can be a little stressful because you know you want to take care of people's kids the way they deserve to be taken care of so i just started noticing you know some things i went to the doctor and noticed that my blood pressure was always high yeah my family has a history of high blood pressure and you know of course we so um they put me on high blood pressure medication and um, we talked about the anxiety and they decided, hey, you know, you can get on anxiety meds um, and maybe that would help your blood pressure too. So I'm like, okay. So that is um, when the anxiety meds made their debut. And I fought really hard. I was like, I do not want to go on anxiety medication. I do not want to do that. I want to be able to, I wanted to be able to get rid of it and be done with it. Not to medicate it, you know? So yeah, fast forward to how many, this is eight years later and I'm still taking anxiety meds. Um... But I will say, I do not tell people not to take the anxiety meds. It's, it's really a choice that you have to make and decide how you want to live. Um, and how I was coping before wasn't healthy. Like... And I'm not sure, at, like, I don't know. I just, I know I feel better when I take the anxiety meds. I feel more together. I feel not panicked and scared because at the end of the day, it's not one trigger for anxiety, at least not in my case. It's generalized, generalized anxiety disorder. Any anything can cause me stress and anxiety 
I could be riding down the road and be stressed for whatever reason. Or sometimes I don't even know what it is that triggered me, but all of a sudden I'm feeling these anxiety feelings and I'm not even sure what it is that triggered it in the first place. So, but that's my anxiety story. <laughs> that's how I ended up getting on meds. Um, yeah. So as you see, I'm at CVS and I'm about to go get my stuff so I can take my medicine and, you know, go on with my day. That's that. All right, I'll be back. Y'all, look at the black sanders in the CVS, okay? They even got some big ones, look. Hey, Santa. The days of coloring the face of Santa with nail polish are over. There you go, dear. Thank you. I must have taught that girl up because here she come. Texting me talking about my can you bring me my my cheer clothes and <laughs> my report card because she's got to show her coach her report card no. I said why you don't have your clothes she said I forgot how you forget your clothes how you forget your clothes and you got practice every day? Come on now. So now I gotta go back to the house. Get her stuff. They just don't understand the inconvenience, you know? Just mommy, 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 mommy. Ugh. guys I just left the hair store because I will be putting braids in okay we can't keep living like this uh, all right I'm about to go home because the bus will be here soon Yeah, the bus will be here soon, so I'm about to go home. Um, and then I have a parent-teacher conference with the baby's teacher. Which I will tell you guys about probably in the next, in the next video. Um, anyway, I'm going to end this video here. Go ahead and like the video, comment, subscribe. Um, I will say I am in the works of getting some things developed for this channel and for this brand. So you guys just look out, wait and see. Um, but hopefully it'll be good. <laughs> but go ahead and hit that subscribe button, like, comment, like I said before. And I will see you guys in the next video. All right. Bye.